I don't know if you heard this from Woody Johnson yesterday. You see Woody Johnson's remarks uh, about the quarterback. Okay. I did not. He said, hey, so Woody Johnson says yesterday, he has, you know, small group of reporters. He's talking about the Jets and how that like their their defense was awesome. This is uh, Woody. Yeah, defense is awesome. It, it's great. Uh, and we can do the same thing on offense. We're right there. And we just need, we're a quarterback away. Essentially, we're a quarterback away. We're a quarterback away from being a really good team. They just drafted a quarterback last year, number two pick. We know what happened. We know what happened last year. <laughs> I mean, well, this season. But last year, they just drafted Zach Wilson. So Woody Johnson is essentially saying, it's over for Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson's not the guy. And, you know, we're a quarterback away from greatness. But somewhere else in the story, Jim, and this is what really got me, and I just started shaking my head. The reporter says, Woody Johnson has been an owner for 23 years. You know, my, you know how many times uh, the Jets have made the playoffs in 23 years? <laughs> six, six. Six times. So, hey, 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 Woody, it's not the quarterback. <laughs> yeah, okay, I know, I know Zach Wilson's not great, but the quarterback is not holding back your franchise. I could say maybe it's the owner. Maybe it's the owner. And just because, like, this drives me crazy, just because you got some money doesn't, see, doesn't, doesn't make you smart. You got money and you've got an association with the NFL team. It doesn't mean that you're some genius. So, uh, according to the the, the uh, reporter in this article, Woody was furious. He was furious after every loss. I could see him just having an adult <laughs> temper tantrum. He was furious after every loss. The Jets were seven and four. They lost their last six, and Woody lost his mind after each of those six losses because he believes it's the quarterback, nice scapegoat, quarterback keeping his franchise from achieving greatness. Franchise hadn't won a Super Bowl since 1969. I like these, these guys. These guys crush me. They they really they they kill me, Jim. Well, uh, you look. You know this. We had Tony Dungy on earlier this week, and I remember a couple of years ago when um, Eric Bieniemy and Byron Leftwich were the coordinators in the Super Bowl, and I wrote a story about the lack of diverse head coaches and what all goes into it, and 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 you know address the issue with ownership. And I'll never forget Tony Dungy saying that the NFL needs to have a class for owners on how, um, how to hire coaches because they don't know how to do it. They come from different business areas and they think they have all the answers, but they don't understand NFL culture. And the other thing is he would say, some would call him and say, you know, um, who should I hire? And his question, first question to, to them would be, what are you looking for? And many of them don't have a vision of exactly what it is they're looking for. They will say simply, well, we want a winner. Okay, well, does that mean you want someone with yeah. previous head coaching experience or none? Older, younger, play caller, non-play caller, offense, defense, special teams, um, someone who is a great communicator in terms of, of the public or someone who relates to the players? Do you want a delegator? Do you want a hands-on guy? All of those types of questions that have to be answered. So in pursuing that story even further and talking to one GM, he said, Having owners hire head coaches, giving them that power and having them do it would be like one of them owning, let's say, a software company and then saying to me, a lifelong football guy, I want you to hire my chief software guy. And, and this GM said, I don't know the first thing about hiring a, a software guy, but yet you're going to ask me to do that. This situation is no different. You coming in from the outside to an NFL culture and saying, I know how to hire a coach instead of listening to the people who might know. So, you know, look, Michael, you know me. I believe that that in terms of the culture of an organization, it always starts at the top. And one of the reasons Amen. the Steelers have been so, so successful is because the ownership at the top of the Steelers have always known what it is they are looking for. And then not only that, but they give them the time to get it right. I think as Tony yes. said, Chuck Nola's first year, what, when 1-13, I believe? 1-13, 1-13. Yeah, so you have to give these guys time. And when you see these franchises like the Houston Texans who are firing coaches after one year 
It's ridiculous. And that is a reflection of ownership, of the culture that's being created at the top. I mentioned the, the, the Detroit Lions this year. Think about if, if, if the Lions had fired Dan Campbell after last season where, when he only won three games, if they had been impatient, or after they started, what was it, one and six this year, I believe? One and six. Think of ownership. One and six yeah, this year. Think of ownership yeah. It said, you know what, it ain't right, we're getting rid of them. You wouldn't have what you have where now many believe that the Lions should be the favorite to win that division next year, going into next year, considering all the draft capital they have and, and the per young personnel that they have. So um, there are a lot of factors in this in this process that, you, again, you talked about common sense. As I sit back and look at it, I just say, man, there's, there, there truly is a lack of common sense when it comes yeah. to running organizations, when it comes to hiring head coaches or whatever. And the sad part is, as you talked about earlier, these teams that go from worst to first, is that every owner in the NFL believes that if his team is bad one year, that they can fix it in one year and That's it right. should win a division title or a championship the next year. And that is simply a faulty way of looking at doing your business. Teams lack common sense. Jim Trotter, plenty of sense, man. Thank you for coming in. People need to know that you came in too at the last minute. Like we just got you. You were on the beach. You were out there playing with your dog on the beach. We said, hey, Jim, can you come in for a second? You were like, oh, I got it. Like you dressed Michael. like that at the beach. No, bro. You know when you see me dressed like this, it means I am coming from my day job. So, and that's exactly what I did. Came from my day job because the back uh, signal went up. And anytime I can help Mr. Michael Holly, I'm there to help him. I appreciate you, brother. Uh, thanks so much. Great stuff as usual. Enjoy your weekend. And we will talk next week. You got it, my man. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.